Hello everyone, welcome to the Jargus Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the 8th episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, The Cybergate Opens. Now this was a pretty nice episode. It starts out with the Rangers accompanying Nate to the woods because he needs to collect some animal DNA samples for some weapons he's developing. For a brief moment we see one he's working on as a bit of a phone slash gun shaped device called the Striker Morpher, but we'll get into that a little bit later. In particular, we find out he does not like spiders, and he collects the DNA for a praying mantis and a scarab beetle. However, the trip is cut short because a new Robotron called Vacutron, who is of course based on a vacuum, is attacking the city. However, Nate insists that he needs to finish the last bit of collecting samples. So the rangers do that, but say he needs to return to the base for us right away. As soon as they're gone, he mutters that he hates being treated like a child, this is why he wishes he had a little brother which is a sentiment he's shown early episodes as well. And just as soon as he puts those DNA samples in his pocket, who else but Blazing Roxy show up. The two evil avatars take him to a warehouse, where they have the Cybergate ready to go. And the Cybergate, as it was revealed in episode 7, is a large device that can transport Evox's data back into the real world from the cyber dimension. However, they need a robot body f that can house all that data, and Scrawlers does not have that know-how. But they know Nate does because he somehow invented a supercomputer that's housing Evox now. Where that computer came from, nobody knows. Evox was first just seen in a pool of more facts. So anyway, he first looks scared, then he looks I learned to determine like he has a plan, and he just so meekly says, don't hurt me, I'll do it. You know, Nate is not a wimp though, he is very strong-willed, so clearly this is a bit of an act by him, but it's enough to fool our villains. And so he uses all the robot technology that was stolen during the hangar heist to create a new robot body. Now while all of this is going on, the rangers lose track of Vacutron because Tronics get in the way of the battle. And so the Robotron escapes with a truck full of Morphex. And just so happens that they pass by Ben and Betty, who are using the new tracking device they invented, as a coin flip. And they almost get run over because it's speeding down the road. But this coincidence turns out to be an advantage, because it lands on the truck and now they know where they're heading. So the twins go and tell Commander Shaw on the Rangers, since they're having no luck finding either both Vacutron and Nate, and they figure out pretty well that has to be where Nate is as well. Now Commander Shaw says he can take care of himself, but the Rangers aren't so sure because he's smart but he's not a fighter. Oh Devin, you'll soon see what a mistake that was. I guarantee it. Of course the Rangers cannot get in the warehouse because Vacutron stops them and they have to fight it. And this time they're struggling to do some damage to this Robotron. Now inside the warehouse, things are a different story. They activate the cyber gate and we see Evox about to enter the robot body, slowly coming through the gate, and parts of the robot turning purple, under the neural liner, which is the device used to combine DNA with Morphex to create rangers, as well as the avatars. However, Nate uses his chance. He uses his comm to teleport in the strike morpher and blast the cyber gate and damage it. And this caused Evox to completely retreat all the way back into Cyber Dimension. Oh, but Nate's not done showing his genius yet. He runs under the aligner with the two DNA samples right in front of the robot. And what happens is, it's a big explosion. And we now see two rangers, a gold and a silver. The gold is Nate, and the silver is the robot. It's been transformed into a ranger itself. And the two of them work together to start fighting the Tronics as well as the Avatars. But the two new rangers clearly have the advantage, especially with the Morphex all used up. Is that the point where Nate says we're going down, and the robot, he has a very lighthearted personality, he says, no, we're going up. And the two of them, of course, do a high jump up to avoid getting hit. So the villains retreat, and Scrozzle says that he's fixing their mistake again by making a Giga Drone from Vacutron. And while it's being summoned, the two new rangers go and fight Vacutron who has no defense against their new ranger's abilities. Nate introduces who he is, but our silver ranger says there's no time for introductions because they're in the middle of a fight. And the two of them are really in sync with each other, almost synchronized with their movements, to the point where one of them can crouch down to use a blaster and the other one will just put his shoulder on top of the other one and blast from there. So they have it covered while the rangers are able to deal with the Giga Drone. Now, it starts by trying to suck out all the energy from Morphex Tower, 
you know, by just sucking it up like a vacuum, because, well, it's a vacuum-based enemy. But Ravi and his Wheeler Zord in Gorilla Mode is able to put a stop with that by throwing a bunch of bananas into it, clogs it up. At which point, the Rangers go and create the Beast X Megazord and use its Hyper Strike and destroy Vacudrone. And this is the first time we see a Giga Drone and a Robotron fighting at the same time. And it's a really nice view of how they both get destroyed at the same time. On a ground level is by using the Striker Morphers, where a big blast of gold energy is called the Striker Beast Blast. Now back at Great Battle Force, Nate is, uh, Nate is starting to explain what happened with the two new rangers, is that when he stood under the Nora Liner, which was charged up with more effects, it responded to the two pieces of DNA he had in his hand, which made him a ranger. However, because it was in such close proximity, the Morphex bonded the insect DNA with the robot along with Nate's own human DNA, creating a completely new robot ranger. Now Nate says, you know, the rangers have always been his family, but now he has a real brother. That's a nice sentiment, but why were they always your family? They've been doing this for about maybe two months so far. Robbie is perhaps the only one he's known for an extended amount of time. But Devin and Zoe, he just met them the same day that Evox made his move. I guess it's showing that he's grown pretty close to them, but feels like a slight break in the continuity. But that's a real, but that's a real little nitpick. It doesn't take away from enjoying the moment. <laughs> and Steel has quite the personality. At first he says his name is Super Fantastic Strong as Steel, something very similar to that. However, Nate decides to just shorten his name to Steel. So that's great, we have two new rangers. One's a robot, one of them is the guy who makes their weapons. Things are looking good. Nate probably won't have to go on his own anymore because he can handle himself, as he just proved. Oh, but our villains aren't done yet. Scrawzle believes he can repair the Cybergate, and Blaze and Roxy believe that they can capture the new Silver Ranger and still use him as Evox's body. So what's going to happen after that? Nobody knows. Episode ends. And now we're on the summer hiatus, so we won't know till September, late August, what the ninth episode is going to be. So overall, this was a really good episode. Had lots of fun, lots of that action. We have a new character who's a bit larger than life, but we also had a lot of development on Nate's character. And soon at next time, we're going to see just how this new team dynamic works. We have two new rangers, so we're going to need two new zords. So let's see what they have to come up with there. This is an A episode, definitely. I would recommend seeing it. So overall, this first half of Beast Morphers has been excellent. All my flaws have really just been very small and nitpicky. But nothing's taken away from the enjoyment of any episode. I recommend all 8 of them. And hopefully the remaining 12 for this season I can recommend too. And given the momentum we're going with quality, I expect nothing less but perfect recommendations each time. Hasbro is doing a fantastic job making this entire season worth watching. I have no doubt they're gonna finish strong. Anyway, that's all for this time. This has been Jargus. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and take a look at my other videos. Until we meet again, let the power protect you.